So, okay, I'm almost 60 years old. You know, this is maybe a slightly older crowd that I'm speaking to compared to who I work with day to day these days for the last few years. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm reasonably old and I've been studying all sorts of things really hard for a pretty long time. Now I know uh, preaching to the choir here in a way like everybody here is intelligent, everybody here already knows how to learn. So in a way, uh, you know, just, having said that and with all respect again hoping to learn from you all tomorrow about this i'm going to just go through a little bit of kind of my framework for how i've managed to like kind of master a, a, a reasonable number of fields over the last few decades and hopefully uh what i believe is going to be a keys towards continuing this so um talking about uh how to learn a lot rapidly how to retain it and then why why do we even do that so uh, again mostly tomorrow although prelude just slightly here uh in the next few slides you know there's like there's hacks and techniques and various tools and tricks to learn and retain and apply knowledge but uh and that those keep growing uh, along with technology and and understanding but also there's you know more uh sort of maybe uh ancient and profound habits and wisdoms uh, that uh, are sort of largely technology independent that we can also talk about. And another thing is I hate text slides. Almost all my presentations on more concrete topics are just all high resolution images with no words on the slides because uh, that's there's a whole neuroscience behind that for effective presentations, which is part of the whole learning process. Presentation is one of the endpoints. But this is such an abstract topic that I just can't do, I, or I'm not prepared to do something that's just images. Again, so I hope to learn from you tomorrow at the session on learning. Uh, really interesting question is, is why engage in lifelong learning? Uh, and I have four reasons. Um, one is that uh, basically it's the human superpower. I mean, uh, compared to the animals and the in inanimate world, that's what makes us human, perhaps, is, is our capability to learn, our ca capability to continue to learn and modify our beliefs and increase our knowledge, both individually uh, and collectively. And it's, it's more than just, I mean, and then the point is, the superpowers uh, it can be used for good, and that's what gives life meaning. So I think, I really think, encourage everyone of course this crowd needs some encouragement to you know commit to lifelong learning there's good reasons uh it's fun it's rewarding you know it'll get you a better job it'll get you a better relationships uh you'll have a lot of fun but in a way that's just selfish stuff the real reason to do it is is because you know we need to we have to solve these problems that foresight is devoted to and that are facing the world and, and go on achieve our, our cosmic endowment and not screw that up. And so, you you know, this is our superpower. This is really the only way we can do it. So uh, keep learning. Um, now, trick, you know, sort of principle number one, in my opinion, to just dive into a, a little prelude of some of the stuff that maybe I would present tomorrow if, if people aren't entertaining me at my own session and I'm forced to dive into my own material. Uh, the first thing is to, st is to stay healthy, okay? Because uh, if you aren't healthy, you know, you can learn, but it's hard. I mean, you can be one of these tragic figures, even like Newton, who was not very healthy, but, but definitely staying healthy, uh, keeping your body healthy will keep your brain healthy and keeping your brain healthy will I increase your learning rate and your retention and your ability to apply it. So I think, I've been obsessed with health over the last few years in large part because I've been hanging out with this foresight crowd and uh, I've kind of I have blogs about this stuff and things like this but I just wanted to say that that kind of um, I'm not going to read them to you you can read them yourself but there are some some key I think for most people these are the things that you should probably these are most of the things you should probably be doing to stay healthy with the number seven is really you know a matter of personal choice, your mileage may vary. Um, and of course, number six, to stay healthy, you have to keep learning, and to keep learning, you have to stay healthy. So it's kind of interestingly, interestingly nested. Um, so uh, kind of almost ending here, uh, a couple more slides. Um, these are some of the subjects that, uh, that we're going to uh, hopefully get into tomorrow. I want to find out from you how you master new topics, keep current, how you organize your information, how you stay fresh. My, uh, two of the ways that I stay fresh, thank you, are um, 
by engaging in contrarianism. I mean, I love to, to always find opinions that I disagree with and opinions that most people disagree with. Uh, and I, that's related to this meta principle by Carl Jung. Uh, it, it's been paraphrased in various ways, but the way I like to say it is the, and this is for life, this isn't just for learning, is the, um, the cave you fear to enter contains the treasure which you seek. So I wish I had learned that in my 20s instead of in my 50s. The cave you wish, the cave you fear to enter contains the treasure which you seek. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully also talk tomorrow about uh, tune, each other, uh, tune each other's presentation skills up, uh, leveraging each other's skills and maybe get into the idea of forbidden knowledge, which is like another step beyond contrarianism. Uh, one, principle that um, I want to put forth here in the last two or three minutes that I have is that, you know, that the human, it's an interest and it's a principle and it's a thing I want to explore and I'm starting to explore. Uh, so the human memory system is being mapped out in ever greater detail, the neuro neuroscience of memory, and you have these, these different uh, types of memory systems and interconnections and they have different uh, capacities and rates and retentions and neurochemistry and um, neuroscience behind them. Uh, you know, it's kind of a black box in a way that we're looking at here. Now, computers have memory hierarchies and they've been evolving over uh, the time, you know, with the top levels, with the registers and then the fast caches and then the slower caches and then the slower still secondary storage and then eventually remote storage or the network being sort of the last level of the memory hierarchy that they get bigger and bigger and slower and slower and cheaper and cheaper as you go down to the base of the pyramid. So we have human, we have human memory hierarchy or 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 let's call it hierarchy and we have computer memory hierarchy but now as Tim Leary, Tim Leary said and I share his view on this I'm not actually that interested in AI I'm much more interested in IA intelligence amplification which I believe we're going to have some more um, discussions about at this meeting and so in terms of intelligence applications so the cyborg the, the 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 human memory plus the computer memory I'm very interested in like how to think about the memory hierarchy or memory organization that is the computer network the internet plus the human how do we map that out using similar things so like I I have my own set of tools that I use that seem to sort of fan out from top to bottom where there's more and more stuff that's harder and harder to access as you go down to the base of the pyramid. Uh, and I'm making a plug for Memex here. Everybody should learn about Memex World Brain. It has really changed my life. I can now find anything I've ever seen on the web, no matter how buried deep it was in the, some site. It's truly astonishing. And then finally, off to the side, I mean, I'm not quite sure what to do with this. There's like this other hierarchy, which is the hierarchy of stuff you produce. Like I keep lists and I keep notated papers and very careful curation of my collections of papers. And then I put stuff into presentations. And I, I don't quite know how to, if the hierarchy is even a way to analyze that, but I'm, I'm very interested in trying to work out the cybernetics of this coupled human mind, group mind, internet system. Very, very exciting. Okay, and I'll just say, uh, Favorite Discoveries, which was another subtitle that somebody, not me, added to this presentation. I think it'd be fun to talk about what are bad ideas. Okay, so I, I put it down here, some good ideas that I've been learning about recently, and some things that I think are bad ideas, like I think drones and 3D printers and CRISPR, which are like the Silicon Valley software answer to everything, are mostly dumb answers made by people who don't really understand their subjects and I just think that they can push a technology that you know is the solution to whatever the problem is. I also have a gripe with moonshots. The, the real moonshot, the Apollo program, is not what people think it is. I mean, it's, 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 it wasn't like an outrageous thing that might not even be possible at all. They knew damn well it was possible and they could achieve it on time and that's why they did it. So I think we might want to be careful when we use the word moonshots to mean things that are, that are long shots. Um, and then the last thing, which maybe will be my topic next year at Foresight, is that I think Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's novel, Frankenstein, is the most important book for the 21st century, but not for the reason people think, not because there's some 
you know, like Daedalus Icarus thing about technology getting out of control. That's not the lessons of, of that book. The lessons of that book are far, far deeper, more profound and more interesting. I look forward to having that discussion later. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kriyan. I First of all, I'm super stoked to hear it from Tom on moonshots just in a second and, and how you're going to tie that together. Um, I can't wait for that. Secondly, um, I think you should really, really all try to get Creon to share all of his documents with you. Um, he's really changed my life because he makes it like a public good for everyone. As the moment that he, re that he learns one thing about everything, he actually make, puts everything on, on shared Google Docs and there's everything from a list of profound books uh, to how to do a ketogenic diet well. Um, it's, it's really, really a treasure trove. So if you get him to share it with you, uh, I think you, you can save a lot of time. Um, all right. With I'll that add being it said, to the show notes. Oh, of, yeah. Of add this, it, please you know. add it to the show notes if you're willing to share it with everyone. I think it's a major benefit. With that being said, um, questions from the speakers. And whoever wants to ask a question in the audience, please line up here. And then um, I'll be collecting the questions on the notes. Great. Okay, it's working now? Good. Um, so I actually have a lot of questions I could ask you, but um, I'm gonna ask about memory because you brought up memory and all the ways we enhance our, we can enhance our memory now. Um, but there's, you know, sometimes it's actually good to forget things. So what do you make of that? I mean, what happens when we live in a society where we do have this IA and we kind of can't forget things? What's, well, well, what's your 60 year old take on that? Um, well, I think that one of the great things about the intelligence amplification and the, and the world brain is that we can offload our brain. So we, so, you know, you have to garbage collect and you have to, you, know, you can't keep it, you can't have everything all the time fresh. So it's great that we can offload stuff to the internet archive and all these intermediate places. And also I totally agree. No, you, in order to stay, to keep learning, you have to stay plastic in order to stay plastic. You have to break down old models and, and update them. I think, for many people, especially intelligent people who have their lives together, psychedelics uh, used occasionally can be uh, great for that, as can mindfulness and exercise and all these kinds of things. But um, yeah, forgetting is very important. I, I'm on Francis Crick's side. We dream in order to forget. So it's vital. All right. Any question from the audience who wants to ask it at the, uh, at the mic? All right, then I'll take one uh, from the private card. What is Memex? Who here is using Memex? Oh, wow. OK. OK. Well, then it may be useful for you to say a word I'll do, about I'll it. I'll do a 10, uh, 20 seconds on Memex. Memex World Brain is a uh, browser extension, but that's kind of underselling it. And there have been a number of things that I've used over the years that do this, and then they die. And so I'm really hoping to generate enthusiasm for Memex World Brain uh, so that it will stay alive. Um, and what it is is it is a... It's, it's many things. It's a way to annotate the web and share annotations, but I don't use it that much. Although I can go back and look at any web page that I've made an annotation for. It keeps a database of all this stuff, and it is a super privacy respecting open source project as well. But the main thing it does that's truly awesome is that it does full text indexing of every web page you ever view for more than n seconds, where you can choose n. And so therefore, when you're sitting there thinking like I'm three months later, what was that site that had the stuff about, um, it had like a, uh, maybe well, you name it, it had a thing about psychedelics and the Foresight Institute. Now, okay, if you Google that or use, or use DuckDuckGo like I do, you're going to get, you know, maybe hundreds of hits of all very questionable relevance. You didn't save it in your history. You didn't save it in a bookmark. But damn it, the full text is indexed of every page you've visited on your local machine and in the cloud if you want it to be. And you can find anything that you looked at previously for more than a few seconds, um, whether or not you saved it. And you can find it by keyword and you can refine your searches. It's a beautiful thing. It's named after Vannevar Bush's concept of Memex, which, uh, where he, he foresaw all this stuff. Unless you just saw it 10 seconds ago on Facebook and then it can't find it. Facebook? What's that? <laughs> On your prediction. Um. Well, I'm embarrassed about my prediction. I should have checked first. I think my I think someone just who knows more than I did. My prediction was that the research uh, funding for in the U.S. for psychedelics research and psychedelic startups would exceed 100 million by one year from now. But I, someone told me it's already exceeded 100 million. So. Oh, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe I have to modify the number. Yeah. Double, to double, double whatever it is today.